Hey guys, so I'm just going to be straight up honest with you guys. My thoughts on this chapter are kind of all over the place because on one hand, Mashima kind of went the route I didn't want him to go with, which is largely continuing to treat Rebecca's fight as a comedic one, which I know is expected when your opponent's name is Clown, but I do feel like he could have eased up on the comedic moments a little bit. But on the, on the, other, on the other hand, the reveal of Clown's battle dress Nightmare Clown transformation ability was also enough to switch gears and say, okay, now you've got my full attention, especially with how the chapter ends, but we'll get to that. Um, but even, but th 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 that's not even just, like, the, the only problem I have, the only weirdness with this chapter for me. Like, my, my, my mixed feelings, my mixed feelings don't just stop there, though, with the, the though, because the, the other part of this chapter that's got me kind of flip-flopping is how the battle itself plays out. Because on one hand, I really like how Mashima incorporated Happy and Pino into the fight in, when, when it comes to aiding Rebecca Fight Clown. Like, th that's actually been one thing one thing he's he's been really consistent on with this series which is incorporating the mascot characters into the story better and giving them a more meaningful role now in saying that where it fails is the moment where rebecca lowers lowers her guard turns her back to clown thinking she's defeated him and leading into clown making a counterattack. now maybe this is me misreading rebecca's character but at this point in the story, just the idea of her doing that feels like a, a little bit of, of mischaracterization. Like, don't get me wrong, Rebecca makes a lot of mistakes. She, she, she's proven to, to make a lot of those, don't get me wrong. But not making sure her enemy is defeated doesn't feel like, like, one, like, like a mistake she would make. Like, I, it's, it doesn't, something about just her, just her, like, turning her back on Clown, not even, like, trying to check that whether or not, like, just turning her back on Clown in the way it's presented, it doesn't feel right with with how we've come to know her character. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I've misunderstood Rebecca's character the entire time. I don't know. But, yeah, something about just that one moment in, in time didn't feel right. And, but... I get so yeah. I, I guess my consensus is I, I like the I like the chapter, but it feels like there's a whole bunch of small weird narrative decisions that made that just felt out of place and not within like how we've how we've come to know like how this character functions or whatnot or or just how things should play out kind of thing. I, I don't know. Again, it's probably me just being weird, but I couldn't help but kind of. I couldn't help but kind of notice these things right out of the gate. Um, now, with all that out of the way, let's talk about how this chapter ends, with Rebecca being consumed by Clown's dark mist. And let's let's get this out of the way right, of the, right off the bat. This is one of those moments where, with how Mashima has chosen to structure the narrative tone of Eden Zero up to this point, I do I do very heavily believe that at some point Mashima is willing to actually kill Rebecca. Maybe at some point in the story. But with that said, I don't think that's what is what this is, especially with the very specific wording of Clown's dialogue. Like in the moment, in the moment, like I have to, like I have to assume what happened here is Rebecca has been transported to some kind of dream nightmare dimension, which, and and she's gonna and, and she's gonna and she's gonna remain trapped there for like a, a good a good portion of the, of, of 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 the a good a good couple chapters now. Which, if that is the case could provide some very interesting psychological moments for Rebecca and help and help her kind of confront all the fears and doubts she's had about her role in the overall plan because that in itself still does need to be addressed and there's really and honestly there's really no other better time or better way than now with this turning point to do that and I can I can even imagine this could potentially bring up some other fears Rebecca not only just about the plan to destroy the destroyed like lendered but i think just the whole just the whole I, just the whole idea of her confronting all her fears all her doubts all everything she, everything she's ever like regretted in her life i think this i think that this this is like the perfect time for rebecca to confront all that and and one thing i i weirdly kind of want to see for this as well is 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 her is her kind of confronting her fears about about her visions of the future. So just the idea of exploring this through what Clown's done has got me pretty excited. I'm not gonna lie. Um, 
And, but, yeah, aside from that, narrative, but narrative problems aside, though, I do admit this was still an overall fun chapter to read. And like I said, I think one of the best things about it is just the little things, like seeing Rebecca use half, use, use, like, Happy's Happy Blasters function, or Pino utilizing her EMP, like, it's, it's little moments like that, which, in my opinion, make the action in Zero kind of dynamic and, and just, just really fun to watch. And just really, just really fun to read, watch all that stuff, and 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 just and and, and, and it, it does make the action in in zero. I find like it it stands out. It's stuff like that does make it stand out a lot more than like fairy tale, for example, or something like that. But, and, but that's not, that's not me dicking dicking on on fairy tale. But it's like I it is it is this fight that does kind of make me realize just how dynamic Majima can it really is when it comes to the action of being zero. Um, now, one thing I am curious about, though, is what's going to happen while Rebecca is being trapped, is trapped, because I doubt Clown is just going to sit around and chat it up with Pino and Happy. Like, I'm imagining we are going to see, I'm imagining what's going to happen is if, if, if things were set up the way I think they are, then, then I think what's going to happen is, and I think what's going to happen is, is, la, la, is La 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 Labilia is going to make an entrance and try to fight against Clown herself to give Rebecca the time to get out of whatever trap she's in. That's that's what I'm kind of thinking is going to happen because if Labilia does is if if Majima's plan is to get is to have Labilia unlock an Ether Gear, and and she does have one that has yet to be unlocked, this would be less, kind of the perfect setting for that to happen. And if she survives long enough. It would also be cool to see Rebecca and Labilia team up to fight Clown, because I don't. I think one thing that's been established is I don't think Rebecca can beat Clown on on her own at this point. Like she she does need help, and if again if 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 Masha has set things up in order, set things up the right way for in in order in it like set things up in, in order in order for Labilia to take the stage, then yeah, I, I think I think this could definitely work. Um, but yeah, guys. That's all I got for this review. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Analyst Control. Be sure to the notification bell, hit the subscribe button, and just share the video around, guys. Dark Knight of May, signing off. Later, everyone.